Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Data Patterns India Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Munali Jain from Go India Advisors. Thank you and over to you ma'am. Thank you Anuja. Good morning everyone and welcome to Data Patterns India Limited earnings call to discuss the Q3 and 9 month FY24 results. We have on the call Mr. S. Rangarajan, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Venkat Subramanian, Chief Financial Officer. We must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that company faces. May I now request Mr. Rangarajan to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights, subsequent to which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Munali. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us today for Q3 and 9-month FY24 results call. I hope you had a chance to go through the earnings presentation, which is available on both the stock exchanges and on our website. Before Venkat guides us through the financial results, I would like to provide a brief overview of significant updates and key highlights for this quarter. It brings me great pleasure to announce that we have achieved another profitable quarter, underlying our consistent growth strategy. In Q3 FY24, our order book exhibited a year-on-year -year growth of 8%, reaching 9.6 billion rupees. The order inflow for the quarter amounted to rupees 9.9 billion. The company has strategically aligned itself to leverage favorable industry conditions, particularly in the anticipated tailwinds from government policies driving the 15% CAGR in India's defense production. Projections further suggest that the defense outlay in India is expected to grow at a CAGR 12%, reaching $147 billion over FY25-29 period. Our organization is well positioned to capitalize on this growth, aligning with the broader government strategy aimed at advancing the aerospace and defense industries. This anticipated growth is backed by initiatives such as Aquilibur Bharat, positive vintage in the exchange list, and the defense modernization plan resulting in a robust order pipeline for Indian defense industry. These strategic measures are poised to contribute significantly to our company's success in the evolving landscape of the defense sector. In Q3 FY24, we secured the following significant orders, including Two avionics development orders received worth 439 million and rupees 101 million from DRDO and Department of Space, respectively. One avionics production order was received from DRDO worth 167 million. Two EW production orders were received from Bell and DRDO worth rupees 42 million and 43 million, respectively. One naval production order and one AT production order was received from Bell and BDL, respectively. These orders were worth Rupees 42 million and 22 million each. Moving on to brief financial overview, in, FY, in uh, Q3 FY24, our operational revenue surged 25% year on year, reaching rupees 139.5 crores. Over the span of nine months, it is a substantial 26% year on year growth. Sustaining strong performance, cross profit margins maintained a robust 68% and 66% year-on-year and in Q3, year-on-year in Q3 and nine-month FY24, respectively. EBITDA demonstrated a notable increase of 28% year-on-year in Q3. In nine-month FY24, EBITDA achieved an impressive growth of 31%. Keeping the secular tailwinds in mind, we have outlined our strategic priorities for the next two years. Capitalizing on promising opportunities in radar, electronic warfare and satellite markets. Greater expansion in the export markets is actively pursuing various prospects in collaboration with domestic competitors. 
Active participation in contracts was to be strictly 30 billion over the next 3 to 4 years. At this point, I will pass the floor to Venkat for his comments. Thank you, sir, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are delighted to report outstanding performance in Q3 and 9 months FY24. Let me provide an overview of the financial results. In 9 months FY24, Revenue from operations experienced a substantial 26% year-on-year surge, reaching to 3,375 million. Nine months gross margin stood at 66%, supported by a robust revenue mix. Development contracts contributed to 40% of the revenue mix. Production accounted for 55% and service demonstrated a growth of 5%. Showcasing progress across all three categories. EBITDA demonstrated a strong growth of 31% year on year, reaching to 1,286 million, with an EBITDA margin of 38%. Profit before tax reached 1,468 million, while profit after tax witnessed a significant 61% year on year increase to 1,106 million. In Q3 FY24, revenues displayed a year-on-year -year increase of 25% totaling to 1,395 million. Development contracts contributed to 26%, production contracts contributed to 69%, highlighting the diverse revenue stream. Service contracts contributed to approximately 5% in Q3, emphasizing our comprehensive offerings. Robust gross margins were effectively maintained at 68%. Profit before tax stood at 657 million. Profit after tax experienced an impressive 53% growth, reaching 510 million. Our balance sheet remains a net debt free, reflecting prudent financial management. Operational efficiency remains our key factor targeting a working capital cycle of approximately 240 to 270 days within the next couple of years. At the end of January 2024, we hold over 690 crore in cash and cash equivalents, signifying our strong financial stability and liquidity. Overall Q3 and 9 months FI24 showcased a robust performance, instilling confidence in a steady growth momentum for the upcoming year. With this, we will now proceed, the, proceed to the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Renu Bad Pugalia from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning team. Um, my first question would be, uh, Rafa, you have to understand a bit more on, I think operationally while we have done pretty well, uh, order inflows have been a bit concerning. It's been nine months and uh, numbers are quite weak. Um, so, can you uh, share inputs in terms of uh, where do you think we may land up the uh, year fiscal 24 in terms of order flow, especially update on Arudra and Himshakti, which have been now delayed for more than 18 months? And overall, uh, how is the order pipeline looking for fiscal 24 and 25? That's the first question. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nenu. Uh, there has been a delay in whatever expected contracts because uh, contracts to Bell and uh, some of the other organizations got delayed. Back to back, there has been a delay. Though they have received orders, uh, we are now working with them to see when the contracts will happen. The dialogue is on, discussions and negotiations are on with uh, the various uh, participants. 
and uh, we expect uh, you know in the next two to three months some uh, contracts will send a few hundred crores to come and probably by the first quarter of uh, 25 or 25 we expect another few hundred crores contract these are all single vendor orders and uh, 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 like we said earlier i think 5 600 crores of additional contract is expected in the next four to six time which we will execute on top of that based on contracts we executing last year repeat contracts are also expected only the timeline is a bit hazy now but as and when the trials are happening we will get clarity during the first quarter 24 what kind of contracts we getting on other hand we are also participating in, in uh, competitive bids so we will have some clarity probably in the next 2-3 months we should be able to give you a clear picture probably during the results announcement after this year right on the competitive bids uh, would the election code of conduct be applicable say for example if elections are announced in early march would that uh, impact the finalization of competitive bid orders to post elections or do you think they will go ahead irrespective of the model code of conduct no no this is not nothing to do with the government code of conduct these are all funded programs in the department various kinds of departments so that the process will continue this is not nothing to do with all uh, with what is happening in the elections right and since you mentioned that almost 5 to 6 billion worth of order should be coming in the next uh, two quarters or so uh, would that also imply that for current year which is just one, uh, two months uh, to close uh, we may actually be short of last year level of 900 crores um, which di- directly or indirectly will also have an implication on the execution uh, which is pegged for fiscal 25 I think we should be around the same range by year end because we're expecting that a few hundred crores orders. Already we have about thousand odd crores now, and uh, whatever is to be executed, we require it to be keep the last year order book status similar. We require over a couple of hundred crores, which already quotations have gone, and the orders will probably exceed that. So we'll be marginally more than last year order book starting April first is what we believe. If uh, Contra gets finalized as we expect them to be because they are in negotiation now. I don't think right. so. So order backlog is expected to be more, or order inflows is expected to be more. Just as of April, as of April uh, this order, year, order. the order backlog or uh, you know orders on hand position will be slightly more than last year is what we believe. Got it. Obviously, first quarter, last quarter. Sure. Uh, so secondly in terms of um, can you share updates in terms of how is the developmental order for the surveillance radar going on and are we on track with respect to billing these projects in the next fiscal year yeah that is uh, on track and on track meaning what there is delay but that is to be expected because it's a very complex kind of product but mm-hmm. all the designs have been completed so now it is in the fabrication and testing stage so we are okay on that i think next year we should uh, deliver these systems and one of the systems will be delivered or both will be completed we would like to complete both it all depends on subcontracted timelines as far as electronics concerned where we have been control we are uh, we are very much in, in place and all the designs are completed so the testing is already started so we will be in line it all depends on how the subcontractor really deliver but i think we should be in line is what i expect got it and lastly um if you look at uh, the disclosures that doesn't seem to be much usage of funds from uh, the qip proceeds for make to programs um so can you share update where are we in terms of stepping up investments for these uh, long lead make to programs in terms of technology development and uh, any potential updates on um, technology tie ups or jvs with foreign oems on this Okay. See, uh, the PIP funds is not necessarily only for Make Two programs. They mm-hmm. are participated in one Make Two and uh, one Make One and one Make Two. Make Two is in actually an advanced stage of design and development. While uh, the expenses are not reflected in the PIP funds, uh, this is because we are doing more development now. Development is coming to a completion, and some of the component order has happened. We also wanted to get clarity on uh, how do you account this development properly with respect to PIP funds. The discussion is on with our with our auditor. That is not finalized now. So whatever design development we booked on our own name will get transferred to that uh, account as and when uh, this clarity is emerging. So we are already on in that. And uh, second is uh, any any kind of large uh, 
uh, development of this nature their product is uh, very very complex it goes to many trials it uh, initial kick in in terms of expense will be limited to only design and then when the prototypes are getting built and certifications happen and trials happen the cost build up really happens so it's a longer term kind of a play that is why we wanted to get financial closure because we didn't want to have only one off development so we took a chunk of money to put it into various kinds of development programs we already started deploying it and the design is started uh, deployment is smaller but it will it will pick up during the course of coming year we also once based on the development we also have put some capital to put infrastructure for manufacturing post uh, delivery we need to get that infrastructure done so that we can address the uh, order expected order book all this will happen in the next two years got it got it uh, thanks much and all the best sir thank you thank you very much before we take the next question a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone to ask questions thank you the next question is from the line of dipen wakil from incred equities please go ahead uh thank you for the opportunity sir and congratulations on a good set of uh, numbers so my first question is on your robust uh, revenue mix that you mentioned so is it uh, right for us to assume that uh, contracts or the revenue that you receive from mod have a slightly better margin compared to say other competitors see um, mod business is a typically a competitive business so we can't say we get better margins or lower margin if at all happens but either which way none of these um, buildings were done this year except we have few things which we got order about few years back to deliver of that but uh, the contracts we're talking on hand and all that is not the remote direct contract these are all uh, dio contracts is so department space contracts and as well as contracts from various psus like the uh, bl and uh, hal etc so we do not have a direct contract today we started coating we got to make two program which we are developing against the modi tender similarly a tender has been released for uh, larger radar where we are participating we have only participated in radar now only so the modi tenders will start over a period of time as of now the dependence is on rdo driven programs and the follow on orders from dpc is what we are executing the transition remote tenders is uh, in is it in the phase and it is to take kick start over the next few years time got it sir so my next question is uh, so this time we have booked some strong revenues coming in from bramo so so is there any update on the seeker and uh, what was it uh, can you throw some light more on the bramo revenue from bramo um revenue from bramo we have a little bit of order left from whatever earlier order which is planned to be executed either this quarter or next quarter depending on their we are ready but depends on acceptance whether it will get built this quarter and next quarter we are not very sure and uh, as regards the seeker we are still awaiting the final trials of the seeker uh, it is not in our hands the products are with uh, drdo they have to conduct the seeker trials and that is somehow got postponed so we are not aware why it's getting postponed but as and when that gets done it's expected that the contracts should happen after successful uh, trials and it is important because india wants to do more in india so and we are also very much more cost effective rather than imported uh, seekers so we expect that that should kick in but i am not able to answer this question because the trials have to get completed that is why we were not positioned or uh, you know uh, place the future contract we not planned everything at up now but what we hear from uh, inform sources is that is very much under consideration and things should happen fast got it on top of that uh, there is also so some orders expected additional orders which are expecting from uh, the services in modi from most back to back they are also saying we should also get some more orders the details are not uh, uh, as of now available but it will, in the next few months we will know what orders are happening got it sir so my last question is on the lines of sir we have currently our order book is close to around 1000 crores so within this order book are there any slow moving orders which have been sitting in our order book for quite some time and execution is slow due to poor things not in our hands 
No, no. Uh, all these orders, we got an order for uh, the radar contracts uh, about a year back. We will probably be executing another this year. This coming financial year, we should be able to execute it. So all of two, three year kind of deliverables. So there's nothing uh, what we keep, uh, is no orders is not there. These are all, most of it will get executed. And also we're more expecting more orders this year, this quarter and next quarter. Are we expecting even some of those orders which you expect this quarter and next quarter, the order is supposed to be executed in next uh, year, 20, uh, 25, 4, 25. We expect that also to be executed next year. We are preparing ourselves for these kind of contracts. As soon as it happens, how do we execute quickly? So in parallel, we are putting in last structure to see that the execution happens. Got it, sir. Sir, thank you for your commentary on the order book and order inflow. We hope uh, data patterns will see some great orders in coming future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. I repeat, you can press star and 1 to ask a question. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sumant Kumar from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Can you talk about your working capital target uh, for, for coming years? Working capital days? Okay. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we are targeting the working capital cycle to be around 240 to 270 days uh, over the next couple of years. As it's uh, uh, coming down now <clears throat> because uh, inventory cycles are expected to come down because uh, we have been keeping some higher inventory due to the COVID uh, pandemic related supply chain issues. Those things are not going to be there. And uh, our uh, revenue on a quarter on quarter also is now reasonably evening out. Uh, considering all that, we expect the working capital cycle to come down to 240 to 270 days over the next couple of years. <clears throat> Okay. Now, uh, talking about uh, the order inflow, uh, as per the CPT, uh, uh, nine months FY23, we have a 6,800, and this uh, this year, nine months, we have a 3,700 uh, 3, plus, and also development mix has reduced. So, can you comment on the momentum of order inflow going forward, and also the development side, the mix is lower. So, what what, is, what we can conclude from here? There are a number of programs we are working on where the contract, there are two things. Uh, order expected is coming based on earlier delivered contracts and uh, production order coming to PSUs and back-to-back -back orders coming to us. There are uh, two programs which uh, Renu was saying top in it, Arudra and Dharim Shakti. This is under discussion. So some contracts should happen is what we believe. Uh, there are other than that, some more new programs being initiated by DRDO. <clears throat> on a high, high um, a deli a fast delivery basis, we are also expecting those contracts. Some of them are single vendor contracts, which we will get in the probably next five to six months time. So I think the order position will start growing uh, this quarter to next quarter. It will start growing. And whatever predictions we are giving you is all based on single, single vendor contracts, because we can't predict what will happen on a, on a competitive bid. So whatever we are predicting, growth is all on single vendor. If the competitive bid happens, that, that is, will be extra to whatever we are predicting. This is one portion. Uh, second, also, we are trying to look at outside India requirements, and uh, some inquiries have come from UK, which, uh, which is, again, based on whatever we delivered earlier. So those things also should kick in. So, and we are also looking outside India for uh, development work to U.S. Uh, organizations. So... Um, I think, you know, we are trying to look at broad basing our order book. One is DRDO, PSUs, MOD. Third is also looking at exports. If we exceed exports now, in the next three to four years, we'll start bringing in reasonable amount of export contracts. So that also work has started. Now, uh, talking about the export and global opportunity, uh, currently we are in UK. Are we exploding and any other, other countries and any, any information on that? We have contracts from Europe from UK and uh, Europe. Uh, we also have a contract from Korea, which we are executing probably this year. The, the UK contracts 
will be or uh, two or three year deliverable. So we are delivering every month systems to them as per the requirement. The other two countries we are talking about is to be executed as a project, which will execute probably in the coming year. That is the next financial year we will execute it. Um, this uh, contracts to export, uh, which I think we need to work on it. Uh, we need to look at uh, our competencies and see how we can build based on built specifications kind of equipment. So normally what happens is those company countries give bid to print because the margins are over. Though we have a manufacturing infrastructure which is in light international uh, systems, our preference is to do value added exports. So we want to seek them. So that we have started as an initiative now and going to do this. Uh, the third important thing which we have taken QAB money, we have talk, not talked about at all. There are a lot of work is being put into development. We increase the scale of people, you know, more than 700 engineers in data factors. Uh, in the last uh, one year, I think more than 30% increase in our staff is also there. So we are actually putting infrastructure in terms of capability, people, training, all of those things so that we can scale the business uh, in the years, five years time frame. So expecting these contracts, see the development, let the contracts happen, also see the execution happens spotlessly in time. So a lot of whole round work is happening actually in the company. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gagan Thareja from AFK Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Good morning. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, the first question is that given your current order book position or, you know, the order book position that you expect to close the year with, would it be possible to maintain, uh, you know, the 25% uh, top line growth that we've seen thus far and that you've been guiding for over the next two years? Because I think uh, year on year, the order book that you'll end FY24 will not be 25% up uh, from last year number. Uh, like I said, uh, um, the expected uh, orders in the next two quarters was also what we delivered last year on trials. Repeat orders are also expected as we go along. See that the trend is maintained, whatever we had told you, 20 percent upline growth. We expect that to maintain for the next two years. Uh, there are a lot of situated orders uh, which we are expecting, so that should also take care of the requirements. As of now, the guidance remains. In the course of next year, if there is an issue in terms of order intake, we will always inform you. But as of now, I think this is happening. And we also expect some contribution from the 3D funds where we put in product development effort. Some of them, they, after we demonstrate, we expect some contracts picking for those programs, even for flight, uh, you know, uh, and this will also help in seeing that the next year order book, uh, we are able to deliver our, our expectations. Cumulatively, you know, your order pipeline looks uh, in, in, in numbers, you, if you could enumerate what could be the size of the order pipeline that you have available for FY25. I understand first quarter you're indicating next year could be 300 crores, fourth quarter this year could be 200 crores of intake. But thereafter, in the next three quarters for uh, this, the, the, the following uh, financial year of FY25, what, uh, you know, order pipeline would you have? And, would you be able to maintain 300 crores sort of a run rate in order intake after post 1Q of next year? I think we will comment on the order intake next year probably with the uh, call. That is, post this year, we'll have more clarity. I don't want to give uh, vague numbers today. We have indicative numbers, and um, you know, we will probably give you in the next uh, four to five months, we'll be able to much more clarity on contracts. But what I can say is, um, based on uh, the requirements coming up, I think uh, 600 to 800 crores of original orders is going to come. It will take care of our next two years of delivery. And some of them will be executed itself. On top of which, uh, we are also busy. You were not audible, sir. Could, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I was not able to hear you very clearly when you made 
the last statement could you just repeat it my my apologies sir i i couldn't hear you very clearly if first is i would like to give a proper uh, uh, forecast of the other three four months down the line not presently we're working on some few contract negotiations and on but uh, we we expect some at least uh, 60 680 crores of orders happening in the next two quarters which will uh, go and also some additional orders on based on what we delivered earlier we expect some repeat orders to happen and so few pro new programs are kicked in they will also start making proposals and if this were to happen uh, on an urgent basis where things are happening one year they are well positioned to deliver those products so we have much more clarity after about 4 5 months you let you know and and the brahmos uh, orders whenever they come through after the trials what could be you know the size and tenure if, if you could give us some you know uh, broad brush idea of that it could it would uh, it would be helpful because i i presume brahmos uh, has very sizable missile orders running into almost 30000 crores worth of uh, brahmos orders plus the newer generation brahmos missiles are also in the pipeline so uh seekers would be a continuous requirement if, if you could give us some idea of uh what's the size of work that's possible there they have not uh, given us any indicative numbers for me to pass it on to you so i think a bit premature let the let the promos uh, you know flight times get over let them give an inquiry and then we know what kind of time frame they are looking at i can only tell you one thing though government of india or promos think that you know our ramping of manufacturing will take time As against what is uh, what is thought, we will ramp up manufacturing very quickly. We have a you know phenomenal infrastructure created, and our delivery mechanisms are very very good. So we probably, if contracts come, we will deliver ahead. Is what we believe, as long as the customer is willing to accept it. So we need to wait and watch what really happens. And the most NG is uh, still not known. So um, you know we don't want to comment on these things. at the present moment we don't have much data we have some kind of news mm-hmm. but uh, we don't have validated information for all of this okay uh, right sir and uh, the qip fund usage if you could give us uh, you know some idea of the timeline of of uh, you know how those funds will be used and over what time will they be exhausted and secondly what will be the capex program for uh, next year we the uh, we thought that we will spend this over the 2 to 3 years time with pib we just started the development work a few months back the first initial is get on to the bench by specification document get it ratified and we put the project uh, positioning the people in place it has all happened so after development has started in two programs two or three pro- uh, three programs four programs have started active design and uh, contract ordering and all has started so we have to do a few more programs and uh, that's because uh, we are trying to allocate the money and the time of people to things which can happen faster and the contracts can happen faster and there's a need in the market so we are pushing like this but i think 2 to 3 years is what we have kept in mind and uh, now that the cash collection is fairly good we can also look at uh, opportunities if it comes our way to for some acquisition mergers also we can consider over the next 1 to 2 years time because uh, we have cash in hand and we are generating cash so we are also looking at uh, this kind of uh, uh, growth also as we go along but presently no decision is taken internally by the board or us to see how to do this but we are open to all these things as we go along and the capex next year could be and you know, what what could be the uh, you know the capital i can't hear you i can't hear you at all if you talk a bit loudly yeah uh, uh, just asking what could be the capital expenditure uh, plan for uh, or budget for uh, this year and and the following year uh following year you know we will we have this plan we have planned to spend about 100 plus crores on uh, capex the timing of the capex will announce next quarter because you know we are doing the budgeting excess now and uh, based on what is necessary for each program the uh, program managers will tell what is necessary for infrastructure creation for testing and manufacturing they are uh, awaiting this uh, actual internal design details to be completed before it will be formulated but uh, yes we are looking at some 100 crores of infrastructure creation right 
and you you while you indicate that over two years you intend to bring the working capital down to 240 to 270 days what level does it stand today at it stands uh, similar to our uh, uh, september quarter it's around the uh, 300 odd days uh, of uh, net working capital days uh we we will uh, you know couple of uh, factors i told you initially in the call uh like for example in today days is uh, likely to come down because there is not going to be pressure because of the pandemic which we had uh, in the couple of uh, previous years and also now the production contract executions are increasing and uh, with the result collection cycles are going to come down so all these things are expected to result in reduction in the working capital days over the next two years. Right. And so uh, the, in yesterday's budget, I think two, three interesting things came out. One is, uh, I think funds for the Sukhoi upgrades were, were sort of approved, if I understood it correctly. Uh, ATL has all, already been given AON, AON for Sukhoi upgrades in CH orders and LUH orders. Uh, I presume there's substantial avionics work uh, there that that you are very complete in a very competent position to to undertake uh, your assessment of uh, you know uh, what the addressable opportunity could be for you in in this area uh, uh, and and over what time frame uh, can this materialize in the very idea of going for qab is to increase our total addressable market and uh, whatever the budget we talked about yesterday these are all expected to happen. And uh, only addressing these requirements, we have already started the product development activities. Uh, we won't increase our addressable market to about 15 to 20,000 crores. So we are building products so that we can address this. There are two ways of doing it. Once you collaborate with foreigners and do a work share and build here, uh, we are actually doing largely our own design where IP creation is done in house in India. And then building uh, this kind of capability and products, which is our class. So that development is on, and uh, we'll be happy to listen to the finance minister that, uh, you know, the allocations have gone up, and they're looking at upgrade allocations and things like that, which is in line with what our expectations are, and uh, what we're working towards addressing those markets. Also, the second thing, what is uh, for, uh, you know, loan, interest-free loan kind of thing, or yeah. low interest loans for long term, or uh, deployment to private sector for, uh, you know, sunrise industries is also a very really welcome thing. Uh, we didn't expect these things, but the government is doing the right thing to build uh, more value creation within the country and more R&D can be done within the country. It's very good. Though uh, we ourselves have, uh, you know, we have taken the QIB and we are generating cash. We are not looking at any kind of loan at the present moment. But this for the industry is very good. And, and sir, uh, semiconductor testing is also being incentivized in India under the PLI scheme. Uh, is it an area, uh, you know, of interest for you? I think there's lots of movement on the on the electronic manufacturing space. Uh, would it be of interest to you to, to look at at those opportunities? I tell you, uh, we do all of electronics. Uh, we build our own test systems. That's why the company started with building ATE, the automated test equipment. We have a clear amount of competency in all these areas. And the electronics covers from nanovolt, microvolt to uh, you know, microwave and high voltage up to 40 kV. We do all of them in-house. But what happens though, is say, this, we write the code, embedded code, any OS, without OS, we write code. The competencies exist. In any area of business, you need to have a domain familiarity. Okay, and uh, that makes the difference between uh, capability and product. The transition based on domain. So, uh, you say, uh, you know, IC testing and all that. Yes, we have a competency, but that's not a focus point in our company. Uh, today, our uh, focus is, to, you know, is a very large, very, very large, um, uh, you know, uh, market in India on the defense. It is actually untouched. They are used to importing all of those systems in India. What we need to do is bring the capability, add more capability in domain, and build product competency to build complete products and get it validated in the field. That is going to be the challenge. But if we can do that, then we access markets. We have access to markets is very, very large. And uh, 
Though, you know, one more thing which has happened is, though people never, the foreigners never took it seriously, they thought, you know, it's it's, it's just a whole while new bottle. We continue to import. Uh, those are a little bit is happening like that. I think people are getting to understand that this is, uh, you know, our government is serious to do more in India. So, uh, you know, the last two weeks itself we've had large, very, very large multinational visiting us and saying, okay, what can we do together? The joint design is possible. But India doesn't have capability, only that I can take from them and design around that. So these things are opening up an enormous amount of uh, product competencies which can come. And with the money, access to money which we have in the bank, and there's a direct need of such requirements, they're also thinking very much as to how to do this because there are uh, there is a uh, overlap competencies for these kind of programs which we can address. So very interesting time actually. So this is not the time for us to really focus on some other programs, try to get new domain, get into things which uh, which is going to take time. Both the PLI and fixed like is there. I think we should not uh, you know our in infrastructure and capability built in. I think we should not refocus that in other areas of energy. So we are really focused on this uh, development in, in, uh, in defense and aerospace. Address the huge opportunities coming our way. The second is build a, an export market uh, in the next three to four years' time to see that we are not only government centric business is not being done, and we are looking at commercial markets outside India. It gives you regular revenue on a month on month revenue. The annuity business is there, or which is fixed for five years, ten years, so bring stability into the company. So today we are all in project mode uh, contracts which also gives instability or lumpiness. We need to change over from, though we don't want to let go of this because the competency model exists to address the market. We also have to even out the whole thing into annuity business and monthly business. With, with not just the production business, which is low, val low value addition, but a high value addition uh, kind of business which is possible outside India. So our focus is somewhere there. I'm trying to see how do I address these markets. So we're trying to put manpower, infrastructure, and start the marketing in those areas. So finally, sir, could you flesh out the succession planning steps that the board and the company would have, uh, I mean, would have taken? I, I, I mean, uh, this, you've alluded to this in the past that you intend you intend to flesh out the plan if anything further has has subsequently been done. If, could could you inform us on that? Yeah, this is a major initiative, and um, uh, one of the major requirements of the board is that we work on a succession plan system and put a timeline for see that it is in place. So, first thing we got is strengthening our HR team. We got a head of HR, which is a very senior guy, who's working out of Infosys. He joined us one year back, about nine to ten months back. And he's been tasked to building his own team to see that we uh, create uh, whatever bandwidth necessary and also knowledge base necessary to initiate the sustainable plan process. Matter of fact, uh, every three years back, we had the NRC, whole day NRC on on uh, what do we done on such a planning with the chart. We've done an excellent job. So we started the identifying uh, the skill matrix, what is necessary, gap in skills, genius levels of management and uh, junior level, where the, uh, you know, the, the interventions are necessary, where training is necessary, where inclusion is to be possible, assessment center. We've talked about a whole lot of stuff and a lot of activity by bringing external consultants and also whether we can, you know, where, where are the areas where Homegrown culture clashes are there, and what do you want to do from bringing external people into the picture? So a lot of decisions have taken place, and timelines have been set by the board to see how to take this forward. So we are very actively uh, pursuing the succession planning at various levels. At my level, we've already involved the CEO to join the board last year, and his operation is actually, uh, you know, the company being managed by him. Uh, today with uh, his team of uh, uh, engineers and managers. So we are on the job. We, are, uh, we understand the seriousness of this, and especially since the company is growing rapidly and we're going to look at five years from now, our targets are going to be very, very different from what we set ourselves today. And that, uh, you know, a lot of money is being spent on product development. We need to see that the company is well-rounded and uh, can not only look at the expansion, but also deliver on time quality products and scale the company. So this is a very serious aspect, and we have given adequate importance to this. And we are on the job. Thanks, sir. Wish you all the best. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen.
in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we will request you to rejoin the queue thank you very much a reminder to all the participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of farooq pandole from avista fund management please go ahead farooq you are not audible Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi, sorry. Um, uh, good morning. Uh, um, congratulations on the good set of numbers. Um, I just wanted to ask. You know, I had more uh, sort of a general question regarding uh, two aspects that you touched upon uh, through the call. One is on exports. I mean, typically, uh, you know, what is our entry strategy into markets? Which are the markets we are looking at? uh you know uh, typical markets that we would be looking at going forward is the composition of work that we are doing pretty similar to uh what we do in india and also you you mentioned about inorganic opportunities and you know if you had a wish list of uh, uh, broad contours of uh, what an ideal uh, sort of acquisition target would look like what would that be um and also sorry i missed uh, earlier when you mentioned what is the cash uh, uh, amount on the books uh, as of the end of the quarter okay um, let us uh, bottom up with you on the cash i think we have just said about uh, 690 crores uh, cash uh, cash equivalents uh, as of today as of january 31st 690 crores yeah that's right so that is one second is as far as now we are a wish list I don't think we should, I should comment at this present moment. This is under deliberation within the office and our board. We will have to do the strategic thinking within the organization, come out of the list, and put some small group of people in charge to take on this. Uh, this is uh, discussed in the board, and uh, we need to do some homework before we come to that list. So I have something in my mind, but I don't. I think it's a bit premature to talk about it on the call. We'll come to it at an appropriate time. um as far as the uh, the exports are concerned there are there be two export two kinds of things uh, defense as well as non defense defense can happen provided we build complete solutions here it is deployed in india the same as exportable outside so towards that whatever products we are now putting in qab in whatever development we are doing see uh, we are trying to see the end system is done designed by us what has happened all along is when we work with drdo we do part of a system and the part of the system is not exportable directly to any uh, any kind of country so uh, you know we don't have the software we don't have necessary other parts of the entire system so the 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 direction is to try to build full systems which is exportable which is what we are trying to do now and this is on our own we try to build systems we have orders uh, uh, both from south korea and from europe for complete system of radars which has been designed uh, earlier by us we need to put in some gaps and then uh, we won some contracts in open tenders and uh, uh, these are going to be exported but more importantly uh, there is going to be a lot of work which has to be done to build complete systems all the make tools and other things which we are now trying to put even again the pay funds are developing once that matures in the full product and field testing the same will be exported outside india so um, so this is one aspect we need this it's, it's wip we need to go ahead and keep doing it second it is non defense again we don't want to do uh, a low uh, we want to do you know uh, critical systems because defense systems like that where safety critical and advanced uh, technologies are used is what we trying to focus on because then the, the development cycle the the focus on how do you design how do you produce those kind of things you learn then can be reused in those areas so again we are trying to address those markets but in civilian requirements non defense requirements so i i can only talk about it now at this present point like this i don't have a contract for this we just started making inroads making proposals 
and seeing that we get our feet wet initially. And once we do that, this will be a slow process, but can accelerate into very large businesses, providing we get the first wins. So, uh, since we have the funds now, I think we can invest in these things for future growth. So, towards that, efforts are being, uh, are being taken. Great, thanks, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sushil Agarwal from NPCC Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, firstly, congratulations for very good numbers. Uh, I want to check one thing uh, that uh, this Dornier and LCA helicopter orders uh, have been awarded to HAL and other companies. So, do we get uh, inquiries from them for uh, for avionics and electronics from them? Uh, presently, we are doing the Dornier upgrade uh, for Navy. Uh, originally, the idea was to import the uh, the sensors. But uh, we are doing intervene and said they can deliver it quite quickly in one year. So uh, the import is stopped and uh, maybe it's given an opportunity for DRDO and the industry to participate and see that we can deliver. Back to back, DRDO has given us an order of uh, two areas. One is in radars, the other is in electronic warfare, ESN. And uh, we got the contract uh, February, April, or nine, ten months back. Uh, we are in schedule. The product has been delivered the first units. The other units are under testing. So, I think it will go in the next few months, uh, two months, or whatever it is in flight testing. So, there is some partial we are doing. Back to back, once flight tests are over, whatever upgrade program we expect some back to back contracts, provided, of course, it meets uh, Navy's requirements, which, of course, we have to use ensuring it will meet. We are doing our end of the job to see that it meets the requirements specification. And regarding the LCA, we already have some parts of it already uh, there from 2005. We have some cockpit displays flying. We have an order from uh, a chair for this, it is under delivery. So we are doing that. Similarly, mission systems for LCA, uh, we replace some of the imported systems and uh, we have orders for that. And also we are executing. Uh, this year, I think we will finish whatever orders are there, we will finish that in March is what we expect. And then new more orders will come next year, we will be in March. So, and then we have the radar warning receiver we have delivered. We have some contracts for LCA, Kwakune, that is being delivered. And uh, I expect the flight performance of what has been flying in LC is very, very good. The customer is quite happy. So if all this works out fine, maybe there will be additional orders coming for the larger Mark A program. But at this present moment, we are not, uh, we are not put it as part of our, uh, we are not projected it because it has to go to trial and, uh, you know, Air Force has to take a decision and how it's going to happen. All the integrated systems, sensors are going to integrate into LC. They will take a formal approach of what to do. But we have something going there, and uh, hopefully uh, we should get more orders as go along. Because uh, my point was, uh, recently, about two months back, the uh, uh, Ministry of Defense had placed a uh, large amount of orders uh, for this LCS with the HA. So, uh, do we get, uh, will we, we will have to participate in competitive tender for them, or uh, based on our development, uh, we will be getting those orders? No, I don't know which order you're talking about. Uh, I think the announcement of that, more LCA Mark names will be procured. More of an announcement and uh, rather than a contract. I think, uh, as I understand, because see, obviously I don't have the contract, HL has a contract. You should ask HL this uh, on one of your calls. They'll probably give you more data. But as I understood, the 83 aircrafts contract is there with HL. Uh, new orders, I, I think they're expecting, but I don't think any tender has also come. And my I may be wrong, but this is my understanding. Uh, okay. The other thing uh, means about disclosures, I just wanted to say that uh, means others, uh, whatever orders we get during the quarter, if, uh, during the quarter we also announce them because like other companies in this field are also announcing. So it gives more... Can I, I understand the question. Can you, can you come again? A bit louder, please. I don't understand the question. No, means I was telling that uh, whatever orders we get during the quarter, uh, if it is uh, informed to the market, like uh, other companies are also doing. 
Okay, but uh, we are actually thinking that maybe end of quarter anyway, in, 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 you know, as part of the board meeting, uh, it is announced as one shot. It's what we, we think. One or two have been announced like that. I don't know if that is a mass requirement. We can also do that. But uh, we are not thinking of doing that. And the order keeps coming every week, you know, two weeks, something or other keeps coming. And, uh, you know, we don't want to make uh, unnecessary announcement in this exchange. It's what we are thinking. I don't know if. Or if we think that is essential, then we'll take a call uh, internally, talk and discuss what is to be done. And in the earnings presentation, major orders received is uh, given us a list. Yeah, yeah, in the presentations it is given right, but uh, this is a three-month gap. So uh, for investors, means all the uh, companies in the same field and other companies, they are announcing periodically whenever they are getting the orders. For more, uh, we will look at it. We will look at it, and if it is uh, required, then uh, we will also try and do that. Okay, best of luck for the future. Uh, we hope uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. I request all the participants to limit your questions to one per participant. Thank you. The next question is from the line of C.A. Garvit Goel from Invest Analyst. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is on the QIP utilization. So we have started utilizing the QIP for newer products. So as far as I understand, uh, we are investing for extended versions of the existing products only. So for example, uh, let's say we have uh, three products, product 1, 2 and 3. So currently what we are focusing is uh, developing on product 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. That is the uh, newer products under the existing category. But considering a lot of technology focus of the defense industry and the changing army requirements in future, are we also focused on developing the uh, completely newer products for the, our product basket like uh, product number 4, 5, 6 and so on? So that is my first question, sir. Uh, okay. Um, we are not doing incremental design on old products. That is, uh, we are not doing an upgrade on old products. Uh, we are doing whatever you want me to do. Doing 4, 5, 6. That is what we are doing. We're doing it. See, what happens is competencies, technologies uh, being common, uh, building blocks being common. Uh, it is redesigned to build a completely different product. A different animal with enormous capabilities in world class. We are building world class systems. We are not doing incremental design changes. That is why a fair amount of money is taken from the market. And this is good to complete qualifications, uh, etc. So, yeah, the new products are being done for all three services. I was, yes. I was asking from the technology point of view. Like, uh, we are having uh, uh, one technology, right? So, are we also focusing on bringing up the new, newer technology so that we can further expand our portfolio? See, as a, as a design center, we continuously work with contemporary technologies. So whatever products you're designing today will be world class. In terms of technology, component, design, everything will be world class. It will be contemporary technology. It's not the old technology being you know, put in a new bottle. No. Understood. And sir, are we still on the guidance of 25% growth in the vendors and 30% growth in the bottom line? As of this year, yes. No, our guidance is 20-25 percentage. It is not 25 percentage. We have given a uh, top line growth guidance of 20 to 25 percentage, which uh, uh, we are largely on target. And as regards uh, bottom line, 25 percent, sir. In the earlier phone calls, it was 25 percent, sir. Um, okay, whatever. Uh, we are uh, we are in line with that. I don't think there is uh, any um, drastic change. Uh, we have a lot of orders you can execute. It depends on what. Mix is going to get done in the next two months is based on how, you know, customer requirements and uh, how they want to really pick up the contracts. We are in line with guidance. Understood. And lastly, on the export side, like uh, we are iterating that the big export orders are expected. So can you put some more color like uh, the timelines by which we are going to expect them? No, no, I never said we are expecting big exports. I, I don't think I've been, this, it's a miscommunication if that has happened. Uh, we are uh, very small in exports today. We have an order book of probably, I don't know, about 80, 90, 100 crores of export orders, right? Around that much, we have export orders, which uh, probably will export most of it, can get executed next year. Um, but uh, that is, in, in our mind, it's not very large. So what we're saying is we're going to speed exports to ensure that that can be a substantive uh, kind of business 
four, five years down the line. So that is what we need to do. Because the competence is being so heavy, I think we should address the global markets is what we believe. So, but the opportunities here are real. So we will focus our uh, capacity to addressing these markets. See the export markets as we go along. So because it takes enormous time to convert markets, get their acceptance, etc., in uh, the export business in civil. Uh, so we will do that over a period of time. Is what I'm saying. Understood, sir. Understood. Uh, that that's it for my side, sir. Uh, all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating in this uh, uh, in this uh, earnings call. Uh, the only one thing I'd like to leave behind is uh, uh, we have been giving guidance and going uh, consistently as for guidance. The important thing is we have uh, visibility because the order book was talked uh, quite a lot. Uh, we expect some contracts to happen in the next two quarters, which will keep in line with whatever estimates we've been giving you in terms of guidance. But more importantly, uh, when we went for Korea itself, we said that uh, we need to scale the company if you want to do it 1,000, 2,000, scaling. We need to have addressable market. And that means that we need to have products which can address the market. One other thing is to go to make two and tender programs and try to see win or lose the tender. But that is going to be not very predictable business. So we said, let us get into predictable business by building products ahead of requirement, knowing that the requirement is there, and positioning the products so that we, uh, you know, get that address on market converted. This is the idea with which we're doing on very deep tech development is what we're doing today. And uh, we've increased our manpower, our infrastructure to this, the capex which is going to come is also to ensure that these products which we're designing now, uh, there's a manufacturing, uh, you know, infrastructure created in parallel. So all this we're doing in the next two years' time, and the product development is online. So the main thing is uh, we have not looked at, a, uh, you know, our earlier days, it's not a quarter-to-quarter -quarter kind of a business. Our business is more longer term, though we manage a reasonable quarter-to-quarter -quarter, uh, delivery today because of online order books and, uh, you know, the capability has been built up. The focus is going to be on next five years, what we want to do. And the idea is to build a sizable business, uh, which is sustainable business on the next five years to ten years horizon. So we just started on the bottom of the curve now. We expect a lot more to happen as we go along. And that is what the company is working for. Thank you very much. And if you have any further questions, kindly send it to Go India advisors and uh, we will answer them uh, gladly. Thanks a lot for everybody for joining the call. On behalf of Go India advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.